to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. Welcome back. Wi-Fi is to yet another transmission of the wireless woman. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. Also, make sure you don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And click the notification bell for notifications of when I upload new episodes and when I go live. Wireless Wednesdays is a thing, you guys. I finally created an accountability system for myself by <laughs> booking guests every Wednesday. It kind of ensures that I will actually be here. So next Wednesday, we are going to have Kira Master Key Lewis on the show. That should be really great. We're going to be talking about being creatives in Charlotte and what the current music industry looks like for women, what it means for us as women to be taking so much ground in the music industry. And so I'm super excited about it. Make sure you click that notification bell so you will be notified. I may also be amending my wireless Wednesday schedule to add live. So you want to be there for all that and that can happen. If you don't click that bell. If you could just go ahead and make sure you do that from now on, that would be great. All right. Also, just because I love being unorthodox, go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji for me in the comments just to start it off, just to give me that energy going into this live, because this is going to be one of my Oracle lives. And I have not done an Oracle live in a minute. But I have been feeling a pressure on my spirit to share some of the things that are coming through from the spirit realm. I know not everyone in my following subscribes to the same belief systems, but I believe this message is, if nothing else, worth a listen. So today I'm going to be talking about the current state of Black women, as with all prophecy. Uh, prophecy is the yin and yang of biblical scripture. It shows the places where God is working on and perfecting his people, but it also shines and illuminates the light of what the goal of that work is. Because let's be honest, we are imperfect people. We are always going to have the areas and places in our lives where correction is needed. And the unfortunate part of being a prophet prophesying, seeing what's coming down the mountain as she comes, is that you have to call the people of God into repentance. There are so many instances in the Bible where God had planned destruction for groups of people, his people and non-believers, as we would say. But the prophet is given as a witness. So that the things that God does isn't arbitrary for one. He says in my life verse, Amos 3 and 7, surely I will do nothing unless I first reveal it to the prophets because God is a just God and a warning comes before destruction. But also prophecy is there because there have been several instances in the Bible where groups of people came together, repented. They were of a heart that broke for God. They turned their faces and their hearts towards God and desired to please him in a way that caused destruction to be averted. So prophecy gives us an opportunity to humble ourselves. And, you know, it, it forces me to stay in a place of humility towards the people of God because I ain't gonna lie. 
being a prophet will get you up on a high horse. Um, and I was actually talking to one of my friends, this is a caveat, a side note, about how the area of prophecy has really become like this desolate wasteland because after the whole Donald Trump debacle when so many prophets were calling for him to win and it just really made the body of Christ, it really made the church <laughs> look like idiots, look like some superstitious, <laughs> uninformed uh, idiots. You know, people really have turn down that whole section of the fivefold ministry when it comes to the prophets. And we deserve that because you have to be able to humble yourself. You know, I even over the course of a couple of my Oracle episodes have called some things that were wrong. They didn't happen. And you've got to operate in faith. You can't do prophecy without faith because it allows you to calibrate yourself. And the best prophets like Samuel, like Micaiah, like Ezekiel, they were older in their life when they really began to be a prophet to the nations. And that calibration process, even for Jeremiah, where God kept asking him, what do you see? Tell me what you see. It's all about tuning in to the voice of God. You know, and we're not perfect in our administration of God's word either. It's a practice for us, just like your doctor. Your doctor's practicing on you. Your lawyer has a practice. He might get you off <laughs> and you might get convicted. It's a practice. And there's nothing perfect about that practice. But I think because I was in that that group of prophets that heard God say Donald Trump was going to get that second presidency, I heard it too. But when I tuned out all the voices of all the other prophets and sat by myself and continued to calibrate the voice of God in my ear, I could hear something wasn't quite right. And when I stepped back from needing to be right, when I stepped back from a lot of other prophets who were actually telling me at that time that I was wrong, <laughs> I was off, that Joe Biden wouldn't go win the presidency, that when I silenced all those other voices, I could hear it. It was just a still, small voice saying, don't pay attention to everything you've heard. And that brings me to where we are right now, because this prophecy is specifically for Black women. It's very rare that God will call a prophet out of one nation to go prophesy to another. You only see it very rarely, like with Jonah. And you see how much... <laughs> resistance God met with Jonah because he was being sent to a group of people that not only were not his people, they were not his favorites either. But as a Black woman, I am uniquely positioned within my community to prophesy to and about it. And so I have some news, Black women. The dark side of the moon is that we as Black women are going to continue to see a lot of weaponization of other communities of women against us, we're going to see the amount of Black woman hatred continue to rise. Uh, the very, very dark side of this prophecy is that much like with any group of people that God chooses to put his grace upon, we're going to continue to see a lot more persecution towards Black women. This collective speaking, <laughs> talking down, punching down on Black women is setting the stage for Black women to be persecuted on a large scale. The most politically effective totalitarian systems have gotten people to give up their own freedom in order to vent their resentment or hatred at other people. Whenever you start to see that type of propaganda against a group of people, that's exactly what's getting ready to come on. You know, you don't get to a point where you get the Holocaust in Germany with the Jews without people first disparaging them as a group of people, seeing them as a burden to the nation, seeing their culture as being divergent and being able to villainize them as a people. And here's the thing. The Bible gives us a lot of blueprints for understanding the ways of God. And that's why you'll, you'll find that pretty much any scholar will tell you that even if you're not a religious person, the Bible is a great book for reasoning, developing 
critical thinking in people. And you'll see a lot of theology classes in universities that are secular simply because reading the Bible is a great way to develop the mind and thought patterns that will actually create victorious living in your life. Doesn't matter. There are lots of religious texts that can be used and compared um, because the Bible doesn't actually dispel other religious sects. The Bible will actually tell you that Islam and Muslim people are a blessed people of God, that they also are a part of the seed of Abraham. And that God, even though he made a distinction between those two groups of people, he did not curse them people. Go ahead and fight with some Muslims if you want to. That's why the Middle East looked like it does, because nobody's getting ready to win that. God put his favor on both. And it's so often that Christians are so black and white, they don't understand that God is going to call his kingdom out of every nation, every tribe, and every tongue. Okay? You don't have the patent on Jesus just because you're a Christian. But with that being said, Black women, you are being called out, as you can see in the Bible so often with other groups, like when Jesus was born, Herod sent emissaries through the areas where they believed this child would be born to kill every child who was under the age of two. You see the same thing with Pharaoh in Egypt when around the time that Moses was born. So this practice of persecuting groups of people doesn't just start in modern history. We've seen it be spelled out in these biblical texts. I know for a fact Black women can feel it. Like something is different. Something has changed in the atmosphere. I put on my Facebook the other day, I said, Black women, you're not hard to love and you are not unworthy of love. And I just felt in my spirit in that moment that I had to just say it. I just had to put that out in the atmosphere because words are so powerful. They're so important. That's why we're seeing, you know, this type of hate, this type of disparaging comments about black women. You can even just make a post. And for some odd reason, like people get all down in your comments with like a whole bunch of nonsense. I'm actually going to do a podcast and pull up all of the accounts and profiles of people that say disparaging things in my comments because it never fails every single time like they'll make a comment they're like no one ever accused her of being intelligent and then I'll go to their profile and it's always someone who has zero likes zero posts zero pictures trolls literal anonymous trolls that just make accounts for the purpose of using their words to disparage, discourage, and hurt and harm women. Like they'll be in spaces where it's like, why are you even here? Like, why are you even here? But they'll come right up in there, pouring salt all in the game, just spewing bitterness and saying stuff that really actually like has nothing to do with what you're talking about. But my point in what I'm saying is, the power of those words, because, you know, you feel it like something gets right in here. It's like uh, what I was talking about in the episode with my daughter. It's like a man pulling a dick out on you. It just it gets your attention. It, it, it throws you off in your spirit. And that's all they want to do is just disrupt the energy. And we're seeing that a lot because they haven't been released yet. To physically harm us. But when you see instances like the Charlotte woman, and I want to say her name, because if it was police brutality, if it had not been a black man that took her life, we would have been protesting in the streets. So Shanquilla Robinson, when we look at women like this who have been taken from their families, we see so much black femicide right now, men who are taking black women out. Black women who are disappearing and not returning home. Um, just a, a, a demonic spirit that's coming up in men that makes them feel that women in general and black women in particular do not deserve protection. Yeah, that one is that one's coming out of the gates of hell. And this is a unique opportunity for black women, because we have 
the ability now to actually identify men who mean us harm. The Bible says we will know them by their fruits. We will know them by their association, that corrupt associations are corrupting these people inside. So you have the manosphere. You have these people getting on microphones to tell you how they really feel about you. Unfiltered. Okay. So the one thing I love about God is that prior to doing anything about the things that we see, he allows exposure to happen first. It can be a frustrating thing waiting on someone who's done you wrong to get exposed, but God allows it for a witness. You have to understand there's nothing in the Bible that God did that he did without a witness to what he's done. You know, great acts in Egypt mean nothing if no one wrote it down. The things that God inspired men to write down about who he is to make sure that generations would know from generation to generation that he's the same, that he's the same God that did these things and now he can do them for you. Those men just provided a witness. So we have to allow exposure to happen for the greatest witness of God's power. And it talks about how he's gathering his kingdom together. He's gathering his people together. Well, baby, the devil is gathering his too. He's the prince of the powers of the air. And he's using these airwaves to recruit his army. <laughs> and some of us are in the army of the Lord. And others are in the army of the devil. And I know that we are being told to love everybody. But if you do that right about now, you're going to sound like Kanye West. I love Jewish people, but I also love Nazis. You can't love both sides. You're going to have to choose one now. And the exposure is allowing us to see which side these people are on. And so I'm here to ask Black women to stay out of this fray. I actually am asking Black women to give up the good fight because give the, up fight the good hasn't fight hasn't been successful. The, the, the fight has not been successful. We can see in, and I'll be putting some of the references I'm using on the screen for you to go and read it yourself. People love for you to interpret the Bible for them, but that's not actually what it's written to do. The Bible isn't written for me to tell you how to live. It's written for you to read it because as you read the Bible, the Bible reads you. You're not going to get out of everything I read. What you need, you got to read that for yourself. But I can honestly say that when you look at Moses and then Korah, God gathered those men together for the purpose of triumphing over them to show whose side he was on. When you look at Elijah and then the 400 prophets of Baal, you begin to see that God gathers these people together to make a distinction between whose side he's on because God is a side picker. <laughs> God doesn't love everybody. I mean, he loves the whole entire world, but not everyone is his. And if he can make that distinction, he's giving you all the criteria that you need to make judgments as well. And I hear people always say, you can't judge people. You can't judge nobody. Only God is the judge. Yeah, he is the only judge. And he gave us criteria for what he's looking at when he makes judgments. He's giving us instructions for how to discern him from the world. So you can sit back and not judge if you want to. You're going to get swept up in the rug that's going to be pulled out from under a lot of people who have been founded. Their, their thought processes have not been founded and rooted in what God is saying about who he is. Because this ain't actually got anything to do with you and who your favorite podcaster is and who your favorite artist is. This has to do with him and who he said he was. It, it has to do with God revealing his character in the earth, which means that God will side with the underdog. God will side with somebody you don't like just to prove something about the nature of who he is. So it's best to know him. 
instead of trying to know the people that you think know him, get the people out the way and go directly to the source. With that being said, Black women, this is really not our fight. You're hearing a lot of people say that and they are being so honest. There's a group of men that are going to be challenged by another group of men. And a lot of their exposure is happening. A lot of them are being given correction. And you're trying to step in and stop it and promote the fact that just because they're Black, they're owed some type of excuse to the rules that God has for chosen people. Okay? They go through what they go through because they're chosen. You are the chosen one! It was said that you would destroy this and not join them! And I know you would love to stand between that, but you believe they're chosen. And if you really believe that black men are chosen to be the men who will dispel worldwide oppression and tyranny, then they have to be better men than the men that they've been oppressed by. They need to be corrected. And this is not your fight. What black women get to have in this time is anonymity. If you look at men like Kanye West, if you look at men like Nick Cannon, if you look at the black men who are really making a fussy buzz right now, Kyrie Irving, all these people, this is the first time in a long time that those people have actually not been talking about black women. They've been making a big fuss about white women and how they feel they are being treated by them. They've been having a big fuss about the Jays and other white cultures and feeling like they're being ostracized from being able to participate in capitalism fairly and have access to the women that they want. Baby, let them reveal themselves and let them get whatever is coming to them. Gotcha. Gotcha. We are trying to stand between the destruction that God has ordained for those that oppose him. And black women are getting a whole lot of hurt by being in a space that wasn't even designed for them to operate in. It's time for us to retreat. It's time for us to sit down. It's time for us to be irrelevant for a little while. It's time for us to heal. We have been the it girls for quite a while. Everybody been basing their fashion, been facing their body composition on us. And it's time for us to sit down, step back from the limelight, stop with the attention-seeking behavior, and let God clear the land. We even have winter. We even have a season of the year, and we have seasons of our life like menopause that are given to us as a time of rest. You know, you go outside in winter and everything's dead, everything's dormant, everything's laying low, creatures are below ground, you're hibernating. There's a lot of safety in that time. A lot of people don't realize bear attacks happen in the spring more often than not. In the winter, not so many bear attacks. We have the opportunity. To not take all the smoke that we are out here in these environments, picking up from these men. It's not our fight. And it's time for you to hear the spirit of the Lord saying that. We're fighting for relationships. We're fighting from hurt and disappointment we've received from relationships. We're, we're in this desperate struggle with our men, we're talking about wanting to be damsels, but all at the same time wanting to be independent. We are just as confused, lost, stuck in cycles as they are. And it's time for us to allow the natural separation that's been happening because God takes care of the weak things. He uses the weak things of man to shame the strong, the foolish things of a man to shame the wise. And so we've got a unique protection for us in this time if we're willing to take it. So the bright side, the light side of the oracle that I've seen is that 
He is much like what we saw in The Woman King, much like what we've seen in the Wakanda Forever second Black Panther. Women are going to be the salvation of our people. But we can't be that if we don't take time to heal, to educate ourselves. <laughs> like I said, I'm going back to college right now. I'm buying homes, um, you know, becoming much more financially literate. Work on yourself. Okay? Work on yourself. If you could just go ahead and make sure you do that from now on, that would be great. We're going to be an asset, not just the black men going 50-50 with them. We are going to be the light of the world. Black women who have prayed for generations of black people. Black women who have been on their faces in churches when they couldn't even get their sons and husbands to show up. Black women who have been faithful who have been loyal to their race, to their men, to their God, to the word, are going to be rewarded. But not if we are defiled. The Bible talks about the statue that Nebuchadnezzar erected and the feet were made of iron mixed with clay. But if you'll remember the last act that Jesus made before he left to go to the cross, before he was crucified, was to wash the feet of his disciples. Women, we've been treated like feet. We've been stepped on. We've been walked on. But if you will wait, they that wait on the Lord, if you will wait, you will be washed. You will be cleansed. But you can't be like Peter when Jesus tried to wash his feet. And make it about you. You got to accept the gift of being irrelevant in this time. If you see what I see and you feel as I feel. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek. Go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments. And leave me some comments. I'm really waiting to engage with you all. But until the next transmission, you already know the drill. You can clock out. You're this one. It is always us versus them.